Yeah, I went. Did you go? Yep. Does it look right? It looks right. Two channels aren't recording right now. It's just okay, one. Okay. Oh, so actually, yeah, no, it's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. When I said there it was go. the drivers, when I said it was the drivers, it was my audio interface. I was recording on one channel, and I yeah, have just the take other the loss, channel. Just muted. take the loss. We all know it's your fault. It it doesn't no you, you don't understand. I have on like the knob on my audio interface turned all the way down for the second channel. There's no way noise should be coming through the second channel. It is a yeah. software problem. Because because it went through to a different mic. I don't even think it did. I think it I recorded. don't know. That mic picks up all the everything in your room and also so this some mic. of your house. So does this mic. I I never hear I never hear that. It's possible it recorded under a different mic, but I only would have had... Do you have a mic built into your computer? I'm not recording on a laptop. I'm not basic. Okay, fine. Do I, do, you have, I do have a webcam. Do you have a headset on? I have a, I have a headset. Oh, yep, there you go. I have a headset, but I don't have the microphone plugged into it. The microphone is removable. Yeah, but maybe not last time, Ben. All I'm saying is... I'm saying audacity bugged. Audacity bugs okay. all the time. We, we're we're done making fun of you already. Okay, it doesn't we had feel our like laugh we're done all last week, and uh, it's very fresh for me because know, I had to we, review we, the episode this morning. We were trading some really funny barbs about you. You know, like uh, the problem I mean, is the episode. What, what's he like in What's he like in bed if he can't even keep his microphone right? Right? Yeah, but <laughs> what what a loser, am I right? But like the episode hasn't, having a good laugh. hasn't gone out yet. You're you're still going to make fun of me. You're going to make fun of me when you tweet about <laughs> it in a few hours. <laughs> I wasn't actually planning to, but now I, now I feel like I kind of <laughs> need to, right? You're, you're going to make fun of me for the, the coming week. Now, you're saying it's over because by the time they hear this, it will probably be nearing yeah. the end. I didn't even mention it in the description of that episode. No, just I very just first uploaded. thing. Yeah, exactly. We got it out of the way in case that was the first time someone listened to our podcast for some reason. And, you know, I didn't want them to be turned away by the audio. I wanted them to be turned away by the content. Well, that's fair. That's always been our goal. That's our mission statement, actually. Oh, man. I had to. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm Nate. And that's Ben. Yep. This is Words About <laughs> You've Books. you listening to us. This is Words About Books. You know what we're about. Yeah. So this, this week. This time we're actually going to be talking about something we like. I'm really happy about that. Yeah, so this week, as you've probably guessed from the title, we are talking about the manga Spy Family. We don't often talk about manga, but... Let me, let me get it out of my system. Ready? Yes. Spy X Family, Spy Times Family, Spy of Family, Spikes Family, Spy Multiplied by Family, Spy Cross Family, Spy Scratch Family, Spy X Equals Family, Solve for X, Spy 10 Family. You had that written down. I wrote that down right before we went on air. Babe. Yeah, I could tell when you're reading. I, I've done this with you Good. long enough to know when you're reading. Uh, Good. Yeah. yeah, that's so we talked about this when we picked it, if you didn't listen to our... Uh, end of the year episode when Which i bought should. this for nate it and is I got pronounced ben captain underpants you're welcome <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll get it right on reading that it is pronounced spy family it's like a little japanese punctuation thing sometimes they put a dot between things sometimes they write that as an x it's spy family it's hunter hunter it it's always been that you're wrong if you say it any other way i am sorry but you hunter are Hunter x hunter it's hunter hunter so uh it is written by uh tatsuya endo and this is published in Shonen Jump Plus, which is Shonen Jump's digital magazine, if you're not familiar with manga. These are Japanese comic books. Usually they're published one chapter at a time in weekly or monthly or biweekly publications. And that's what this is. It's technically a webcomic, I guess, since it's in a digital magazine. But it was but kind for of... For our purposes, it's a book. Yeah. It was kind of an experiment on Shonen Jump's part. They, they put like different sorts of uh, manga in their digital magazine than would normally make it into the regular magazine, which has featured things like 
you know, Dragon Ball and Naruto and, and all those like action stuff aimed at 14 year olds. Bleach. Bleach. One Piece. One Piece, yep. Princess Leia! Inuyasha. Inuyasha was not in Shonen Jump. Oh, really? Yep. Well, that's good because it went on for like 20 years or something. <laughs> but, uh,. I have to get this out of the way because I think I'm contractually obligated. I do another podcast called That Time I Got Reincarnated in the Same World as an Anime Podcaster. I do that with uh, Isekai Sensei-sama, who's been a longtime supporter of this show. And Yeah, if- every time we end this podcast, we actually have to murder Ben so that he'll reincarnate to, to do the other podcast. To do yeah. that other podcast, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if, if you want to hear my... my uh, anime credentials i guess i i have a passing knowledge of the subject and i um <laughs> he's got a do <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i do actually know what i'm talking about but this is not a manga podcast so i'm not going to focus on all of that uh i'm just going to add one more about the author thing is that uh tatsuya endo this is not the kind of manga he was doing for most of his career most of his career he did like gritty hyper violent stuff really yeah and uh it was what a departure it was an editor (laughs) who suggested to him maybe try something funnier this time or something lighter and uh it was by far his most successful project at least in the west i don't think anyone in america who isn't googling could name a single other one of his manga i certainly couldn't before i looked him up yeah, it's an interesting fact. I Spy was, I think, the one shot that turned into Spy Family that is nothing like Spy Family. I think the initial concept ah. for Anya was she was like an adult psychic who fought battles and stuff. And then he re- uh, the, the editor was like, let's do something different this time. Yeah, it, it's an interesting departure and an interesting departure for Shonen Jump. I, I'm not sure if what the conscious decision was for Shonen Jump to start trying to move away from targeting like boy action comics specifically, but recently they've been doing more emotionally intelligent series that appeal more broadly. And this was it. Did they suffer some sort of uh, reduction in sales, and they're like, "Shit!" They did. I don't we think need to, we need to capture a wider audience. Yeah, I think that's definitely part of it. Sales haven't been terrible for Shonen Jump, but Japan has uh, an aging population. <laughs> there are fewer fourteen-year-old boys than there were, and there's only going to be fewer every year for the foreseeable future. So, um, unfortunately, they're going to have to figure that out and. I think one thing I'd add to that is there's a wrinkle in this of um, American sales and, and sales outside of Japan more broadly. They don't make a lot of money on that. They license it and they get the licensing fees and they get some royalties and that's it. Most of the money for a sale outside of Japan goes to the distributors. So it's not like like I've heard people say, well, why don't they just make manga that that doesn't target the Japanese market so heavily. It's that's why. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. But then they would have to make it go from left to right. That'd just be weird. They used to. What? Yeah, they used to mirror it. I have um, really old manga from back in the day. Like, uh, I think my first couple volumes How of back in the day. Um, I... <laughs> first time I saw manga was Dragon Ball Z from like I think it was like two thousand. That I saw it, and you it was right to left. Um, so I have a copy of Akira from, I want to say... The a, 80s? No, around that same time, Dark Horse was still mirroring the pages. I think Viz was uh-huh. one of the first companies which probably published that copy of Dragon Ball Z that stopped mirroring the pages and decided to try to make the Western reader go right to left. I've talked about this more on the anime podcast if you want to hear about it. But yeah, when I was coming up, I was I was pretty nerdy. This may shock some listeners to I'm, find out. I'm shocked. But I was into martial arts and stuff. I've been into... I, I did karate before I did taekwondo. Um, it's pronounced karate. It is. I watch Spongebob. And it means empty hand. <laughs> I, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, but I... 
had some familiarity with Japanese. Like I took karate with somebody who was from Japan and she actually taught Japanese. I knew a lot about this stuff and I was weird for knowing it. So that's what I was used to. But now like Gen Z, I, I see rap albums. I saw a rap album. This was probably 10 years ago, but it, it, it was, it was called the destructo <laughs> disc and it had like a, a black version of Krillin on it. And I was like, God damn, this is so cool. I'm glad I'm so happy. Like this has been so embraced. And now like, Everybody, you got Ash Nico, who's like some some American British Who? girl. I don't know. It's a famous like hyper pop artist. Hyper pop is a, it, you're not going to understand it. You, you don't know the kids. No, um, no, you don't know the kids like I do. I I I don't know this TikToks and this Hulu. Hulu. <laughs> 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 oh. We're here to talk about Spy Family. And this is one I've been trying to get Nate to read for literal years at this point. It came out in 2019, and I've been trying to get him to read it basically since then. And he he will not. He he would not until I made it part of this podcast. I bought it and put it on his Kindle and said, you, you have to read it. That's the episode we're doing. But this was also my Break in Case of Emergencies book. And uh, after the debacle (laughs) with how to kill your family, it was indeed an emergency. And and we are busting out Spy Family, which is one of the most wholesome manga ever conceived. It's a a pretty big contrast from that from that last one. (laughs) It's basically how to kill your family versus how to appreciate your family. Yeah. Not even a family by blood. So I'm I'm interested for you to give sort of the setup of this because there's an anime community version of this setup that I feel often gets it wrong. Like if you read the back of the book in the bookstore, it does not do a very good job of telling you what this is about. I'm interested oh, okay. I'm interested to know like uh, your outsider perspective on this. <clears throat> Agent Twilight is the world's most amazing spy and master of disguise. And now, in order to save the world, he has to undergo his most daring challenge yet. Being a father and husband! Whoa! This is, this is not what I was hoping for. <laughs> not by a long shot is this what I was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> the okay i'm gonna take over now you tried <laughs> no i got this ben <laughs> oh, you want to keep going when the far right political party of the eastern country oh boy plots an assassination attempt of the western country this is worse twilight has to go undercover to get close to his target this is worse <laughs> he has to He has to he has to get a, a family. He's got to he's got to go to an orphanage to get himself a, a child and then he's got to he's got to get her enrolled in the most prestigious academy in eastern country in order to have his new child get close to the child of that politician okay. it's, it's but in just, order to get into the academy please, he's gotta also have a wife please stop now so <laughs> whoa <laughs> am i right <laughs> okay i guess i will give you uh so the outsider perspective his daughter failed. has psychic powers our outsider art his, is garbage his wife is a contract killer yep yep okay so here's the plot of spy family <laughs> Spy Family is a comedic <laughs> comic set up in a kind of fictional East Berlin versus West Berlin area. Is that what that is? Yeah, they call the countries um, West Westalis and Estonia or Ostenia or something like that. Yeah, they do. And, Twi- and Twilight the East definitely has like a a secret police yeah. type deal going on. Who's related to the wife? So, oh my God, Ben! the The plot is that there, mind blown. There's a Western James Bond type spy called Twilight. He has to get close to a target, and this target only ever comes out at school functions for his children. 
and his children go to the most prestigious academy in the East. And so Twilight has to come up with a family, uh, get his daughter enrolled in that academy, and try to get close to the target and avert war. He winds up with a daughter who is psychic. She can read minds. She's also he doesn't know that. Yeah, he, sh- he doesn't know that. She's the glue that's going to hold this whole thing together. He winds up with a wife who is a professional assassin, and he doesn't know that. She doesn't know that he's a spy. But the daughter, who is, I think, four years old at the start of the manga, is obsessed. She was six. She pretends to be six, but I think she is actually younger. And she knows that yeah, they expect her to be six, so she that, lies about her age. That would explain... Why she can't read. That would explain why she has <laughs> such a hard time pronouncing most things. Yeah. So she is obsessed with a spy cartoon, and she loves spies, and she loves all the mystery and action of that world, though she has no appreciation for the reality of that world, like how dangerous it actually is. And she just thinks it's really cool that her dad is a spy and her mom is an assassin. And so their adventures are a series of of wacky misunderstandings and things that are not very serious being taken super seriously while Anya desperately tries to keep it all going and screws it up almost every time, Anya being the daughter. So before we go too far, how much of it did you read? How, How far did you end up getting? The first two volumes. Okay. What's the last thing that happened for you? Uh, she tried to apologize. Oh, no, no. Uh, is her name Yor? Because that's how I read it. Yeah, Yor is the wife. Lloyd is the father. Anya is the daughter. Yeah, so her brother just dropped by. Her brother is a member of the secret police. And he was not told that his sister got married so he's he's suspicious of this lloyd yeah so what kind of wacky situations are a spy and a counter spy and an assassin and a psychic girl going to get into over dinner find out on the next (laughs) exciting volume of spy family the thing i like about spy family (laughs) is that it is very much a sitcom often things go back to zero at the end and they, they do have arcs. They do have character development. It does move forward, but so far I think they're about 70, 75 chapters in and it, it hasn't really changed the formula, but it's a good formula in my opinion. They I'm, I'm interested how it worked for you. You're making it like, did you say they're getting a dog? They get a dog named bond who can see the future. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> There's they continue to add <laughs> wacky characters. And well, you have to. What they do instead of moving the plot forward, which I think is good to get more mileage out of this because I think this really wants to be a long-running series is they introduce a huge cast. And as the comic goes on, once the main family and the main mission gets established a little bit they break off and they start doing side chapters on all of the side characters like the the school headmaster has a backstory the anya's he's a guy that keeps yelling about elegance yeah you should really watch the anime because like the the voice actor does pretty good with english but he always says eleganto eleganto very eleganto and I love it because he's because the actor has to like commit because you know how like over the top he gets when he yells it. So he's like, Eligando. but yeah, he gets a little backstory. The the kid that Anya is supposed to get close to, he has a whole backstory that's actually really good. He's one of the more well-developed characters. Uh, Lloyd's informant has a backstory. Frankie, the guy with the curly hair. Yeah. They introduce another agent from Lloyd's spy uh, <laughs> I guess MI6 or whatever um, who is in is lo- like Wise or something yeah yeah it's Wise they introduce another agent from Wise who is uh, a woman and she's in love with Twilight and she wanted to play the wife but she wasn't available and now she's available and she's trying to like undermine Yor that's not nice again what a dick also not knowing that Yor could 
break her arms off. But uh, could kick her through the ceiling. <laughs> this, there's a couple of dynamics in their relationships that I like. It, it, like Twilight is always like very cool, calm, collected. Always keeps things going. Always keeps it like under wraps. Always keeps it under control. Anya is the mischief maker. Your is an assassin who is very, very good at killing people. But outside of that, she's like very meek and mild and completely unaware of how people see her. She thinks everybody hates her all the time. <laughs> and it sounds very anime. It It's tempered. Like these are, I, I want to say multidimensional characters. They're not quite the one note that anime and manga usually strike. You're giving me very little to work with, Nate. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm letting you carry this one. I'm just curious, like, because you've given me the, like, sitcom, like, what wacky, blah, 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 well, they blah, blah, blah. What were your impressions? I, I've been recommending this. Is that this. not wrong, Ben? I've been recommending this for so long, and you're giving me nothing back. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up our uh, episode. <laughs> I, this isn't even about the show anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that it costs, what, like two or three dollars to get a monthly subscription to Viz? It's the Shonen Jump specifically. You don't get everything on Viz. You just get what's in sure, Shonen whatever. Jump. Sure, uh, uh, whatever, Ben. Well, that's go, important if you want to read Inuyasha. Everyone listening to this needs to go. No, don't read Inuyasha. Why would you? It's it's the greatest anime romance of all time. Yeah, until it went on forever. <laughs> Eventually, you have to answer the question, will they or won't they? You can't keep pushing that off forever. Oh, they will. There's a sequel series now about yeah. the children. Uh, <laughs> come on, man. It's called Yashahime. Oh, God damn it. But yeah, so Shonen Jump costs $2. But yeah, Spy Family. You can't get Inuyasha, but you can get Spy Family. Yeah, throw a few dollars at them, also at us, and then uh, go read Spy Family. It's really good. It's definitely comedic. I actually did laugh at more than one thing. I haven't even gotten to the dog that can see the future. It's wacky. There's a story, Ben. I don't know what you're talking about where it always resets to zero. I do feel like we're making progress. It's definitely a slow progress because you're right. I think it wants to last. Obviously, she can't get into school and then just, like, we, we jump to the end. <laughs> she's, in the, she's in the elite group of scholars with the, the son of the politician. I think I... But... So what I mean by it resets to zero is... The obvious arc of the family is that each of them enters into this family for a practical reason. They're, they like the husband and wife are not in love. It's a marriage of convenience. She needs a cover. He needs a cover. They help each other out. The girl does genuinely want to be their daughter. I think she's the first one to come around and want it to be a real family, but the other two haven't admitted that to themselves yet. They come, but it's very clear they do. They yeah, they come very close, but they haven't said it out loud. And so the minute they say that out loud, I think is the beginning of the end of the series. I think that's the part that can well, move yeah. forward. That's the will they won't they? Yeah. <laughs> and eventually they will because they have to. And social awkwardness is the Naraku. Oh Jesus. That keeps <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no no but it's very sweet their relationship because they 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 care about each other and i think like they're afraid of rejection almost but yeah that's what i mean by yeah. reset to zero the the plot itself though the, yeah, they, the east west school stuff does move i love i love that they're like and it, maybe it's the translation or maybe it's just like we need to get this information across to you it just felt really weird when they're like, a politician from the far right of the eastern country might be responsible. Yeah, that is a little. It's like, uh, <laughs> in it's a little, it's a little weird to say the least. Just my um, my my co-hosts of the other podcast will vouch that I uh, I have a real like 
bug up my ass about translation. <laughs> and yeah, I, I can also test. To yeah, this. I, I have a lot of problems with a lot of translations, but Spy Family's translation is actually on point. I think they do a really good job with it. I think they do a really good job localizing Anya because she talks the way I, I your does your daughter talk much yet? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Are you teaching her like manners Non-stop. and everything? Manners. Like Like when somebody gives you something you have to say thank you. Um I mean, I always say thank you to her. She I don't think she's there yet. That's what okay, that's what I was asking. She'll point to things and be like, that's mom and mama in the picture. That's dada. She can point to her body parts. She can ask you for stuff. <laughs> I i am terrible at knowing when little kids learn language. Yeah, me too. I, <laughs> I don't have any fucking clue. But my my point is, in, in Japan, there's a lot of manners. They're, they're a very polite society. And there are a lot of things you're supposed to say at a certain time. And Anya does almost all of them wrong. But they find a way to translate that into English that works. Like, they still get the point across, even though we don't have a tradition of saying, like, I'm home, welcome home. That's that's something you have to do in Japan. That's very polite. Um, oh. You say something at the beginning of a meal. You say something at the end of a meal. You know, obviously, please and thank you. You don't clap at a wrestling event uh, or cheer, I guess is it, it is. There, you don't be loud in general. Yeah, except for when you're eating and then you slurp as hard <laughs> as you can. You got to aerate the ramen. Yeah, in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the reason I brought all that up is because, yeah, that is that is the clunky way of describing things in Japan. A lot of the descriptions of politics in anime and manga is couched in a lot of vagueness. And I'm not sure if that's because of different um, like slander and libel laws. I'm not sure if that's because of just tradition. But for whatever reason, they, they can call the city Berlin, but they, they can't say any particular party's name. And in Japan, like... Hey, now, it's the National Unity Party. Well, and I think, is the Conservative Party in Japan, I think it's called, like, the Liberal Democratic Party. I, I think they, they chose to do that out of expediency and also tried not to step on any toes. They have that big, clunky explanation. And that's a problem for a lot of Japanese stuff coming to a more general audience, is sometimes it's just way too clunky. For the most part, Japanese humor doesn't work for me at all. What? As much as I like Japan and anime and manga and the language. Do you don't like the pervert guy? No. Spying on the girls in the sauna? Yeah, there's a lot of like that blue like toilet humor. And I, I guess that's universal. So that's probably what comes over the most. Like, uh, There's not really much in this one. No. And I love that about it. Which is great. Yeah. For whatever reason, Spy Family translates really well like charitably i will about an ordinary family kind of yeah but yeah for whatever reason like they get into wacky antics well and the wacky antics are relatable they're not over the top anime nonsense or they're funny twilight has to go get a microfilm from like a seal in an aquarium and it's a penguin anya reads the minds of the seals penguin because he, he knows that he's looking for it. I don't know right? how you confused a seal with a penguin. What the fuck ever, man. They all look the same to me, okay? All aquatic animals. <laughs> they're, they're, they're some kind of slippery. So, so she, point, she points it out, like, oh, that one's, that one's acting weird over there. It doesn't seem to want to eat. So Twilight has to go undercover. But he also has to maintain his cover that he's a lovable father. He has to maintain that appearance. That's even why they're in the aquarium to begin with. And he gets the microfilm, but the bad guy gets away. So so Anya jumps on him and yells that she's being kidnapped. So Yor beats the fuck out of that guy. It's great. Yep. I loved it. 10 out of 10. She beat, she, <laughs> No one knew that Anya was pulling all the strings, but everyone played their part. It was great. 
at the end he he gets what was it? He got like some big gift or something. Again, oh, it's to maintain penguin. appearances. Yeah. It's one of those things. Yeah, he like wins it or something. Yeah, the giant so, the giant penguin gets a little side story. Oh my god, Agent, Agent Penguin. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's the idea of fake it until you make it. He's being a good dad by faking being a good dad. Was there anything you that stood out to you that you didn't like at all, aside from the clunky like political stuff? I mean, that was only like one panel too. Yeah. I don't want to blow that up like it was a huge thing. It it stood out to me as being weird, but the translation's not horrible or anything and that being said no i don't think there's anything that really stood out to me as something i didn't enjoy it's got (laughs) it's got just the right mixes of humor it's it's light it's wholesome is that the word you've used that's what i say i would agree with that it's it's something i don't often say in connection with the anime community (laughs) It's yeah, it's it's these people who are not a, they're a, they're a family of convenience, but they grow to really like each other and wacky humor ensues. Like the headmaster who's yelling about such elegance when they're trying to get into the academy. And it did remind me a little bit of you as like and, an elderly man. God damn right. That's <laughs> that's my dream to to spy on people from the second floor window and yell about how elegant this family is, and then Wait, let's not pretend try to expose them as being not elegant, only to find out that they brought three changes of clothing just in case. Let's not pretend that if you were ever presented with the opportunity to unironically wear a long coat and monocle. That you would not seize upon that and make that your entire identity. Well, I can't wear a monocle because of the glasses. But I will use those like binocular things that that's on the little stick or whatever. You hold it up and you go, Oh! 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 <laughs> oh mmm! <laughs> You are a man obsessed with elegance, because it, yeah. For for viewers who 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 don't know, um, <laughs> Nate has appeared on camera. I think exactly twice, both times wearing nice. a smoking jacket. God damn! Once right. wearing a fancy opera mask. Yeah, and once and had a pipe. Yeah, don't forget the pipe. And there. you had a pipe, and once wearing sunglasses as Chad Dingleton, but. <laughs> You have the the other episode that was pitched as like the break in case of emergencies episode was words about weddings where Nate complains <laughs> about people's behavior at weddings. <laughs> so if you don't think like Nate identifying with the man obsessed with elegance, like you think that's a joke and, and it's very funny and everything. It kind of that's who Nate is going to be as he ages. Yeah. I'm already old as shit, and I'm just gonna keep getting older. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you may you may think I I'm in my mid thirties, but I have lived a very long time. I'm in my mid thirties. My but... birth certificate says <laughs> that I was born about thirty to thirty. We'll give you an age range, you know, thirty to to thirty three years ago. That's what my birth certificate says. But like. I've, I've I've been around a long time. <laughs> I was gonna say I've I've lived very soon. I will have lived thirty five years. Oh my god! But it feels like longer. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you about a classic spy family scene that anyone who has read okay. Spy Family will remember: the interview to get into the school. Yeah. Where there's one guy who is extremely mean to Anya. Yeah. That guy was a dick. I'm interested in your... I'm glad he got punched <laughs> so hard his entire face gave in. I was going to say, I was interested <laughs> in your perspective on that specifically as a parent. Because I don't know if you want me to describe the scene or if you want to talk about it, but... Yeah, they've got 
an interview as part of the admissions exam. Only the most elegant of families even make it this far. And so they've got the headmaster. He's the guy who talks about elegance. He's Nate from the future. You've got, I don't know, generic guy. I can't remember who he was. He was he was kind of like the, the in-between guy. <laughs> glasses right? man and half glasses man, as Anya remembered them. Yeah, exactly. And then you had Nepo Douchebag. <laughs> Nepo Douchebag, um, instead of selling novels just by writing one chapter, he is the, was he the grandson of the founder? He is the son of the former headmaster, I believe. Ah, okay. Son of of the former headmaster, Nepo Douchebag. And Nepo Douchebag, he hates him some wholesome families. He is just a miserable pile of crap. He he has marital problems himself, and his family hates him, so he's taking it out on everybody who's in a happy situation. Yeah, when he should just, you know, do a ton of drugs and wander off into the forest. But anyway, Nepo Douchebag is... He's making some snide comments here and there. The other two are like, that's that's inappropriate to say, dude. Knock it off. And finally, Nepo Douchebag is like, which mommy do you like more? Your first mommy or your current mommy, which is your? And that makes Anya cry. And he's like, I knew it. Yeah, it's not, it's not Anya's fault that she prefers her original mom more. Ha 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 ha. And uh, Lloyd gets up and punches through the table. There's a mosquito on there. That, that was his excuse, even though clearly, fuck this guy. He, he gets up. And he's like, look, this academy actually sucks. You don't have to take this crap. I'm out of here. Which, again, clearly, whether he admits it or not, he values... Anya and you're over his mission. Yeah, his whole inner that... his whole inner monologue is let it go, let it go. You, they're not really your wife and not really your kid. Don't tank the mission over this. Uh, but then his actions are in in the manga. They they do it like his inner monologue is the panels, but all the while his actions are not matching the inner monologue up until the point where he throws a punch. Yeah, and. In the anime, I think they they do a very good job with it as well. So, yeah, it's clear that he he does care more about his not actual wife and kid than the mission. And they get up, they leave, and Nepo douchebag is laughing and you know, oh, you're never going to be in this academy. You walked out. You suck. Ah. And then elegant guy. I don't know. Does he like tap him on the shoulder? I don't I don't remember exactly. It's a the hard It's a hard cut. He's, Other than he's there's a <laughs> Sorry, there's there's a There's word an entire bubble. page yeah. of his of his fist being rammed through Nepo douchebag's head. His whole face caves in. <laughs> it's amazing. I loved it. I sent it to you as a screenshot. I laughed. It was wonderful. I So the thing I like the most about that scene and the thing I like about the way it's constructed in the comic, we talked about this a little bit with Junji Ito. And, and this is also why it, it's really important to not mirror comics and preserve panel order and things like that because the way they write it is – you think that guy is going to win. You think that, you know, the, the payoff is that Lloyd chose his family over the mission and that that's it. He's, he's, there's going to have to be some way they solve it. And then you turn the page. (laughs) And the next thing you see on the page is that guy getting punched. And it was, it, to me, it was like the per, it was perfect comedic timing. Because you really thought that dude had gotten away with it. That he got to feel superior. And then you turn the page and there's a punch and you're just like, yes. 
and, and yeah, it's, it's very cathartic. Yeah, well, and it, it's fuck that guy. That guy's an asshole. He made a child cry. I'm glad he got punched. Well, and it's perfect comic direction. Like, there's a lot that goes into the comic. It's not just about being able to to illustrate well. Like, being able to do a beautiful painting doesn't necessarily make you a good comic artist. You have to have an eye for paneling and timing and guiding the reader's eye across the page. And that that was like, mm, that's like, I would teach that in a, in a sequential art class. That was perfect. I'm trying to think if there are any more... There's some of my favorite characters. You haven't... Anya also punches someone. Oh, okay. Let's talk about that. That's another great one. Yeah. So she's in the academy at this point, and she needs to either... P- Plan A is to get eight... What are they called? They're, they're basically merits. Okay. Yeah, there's merits. Eight merits. You, you get into the elite scholar club, which is where... Uh, the target's son is so that's that's the way to get close that's the way lloyd's gonna get close to him plan b is she makes friends with the guy's son damien damien yeah he even has an asshole name uh, <laughs> but he he seems like there's more to him he's he's a little jerk he's like uh i guess closest thing would be like draco malfoy right he's He's bullying Anya, and he's just being a dick. He's got his two goons. And Anya learned martial arts from Yor. She's, like, shrugging everything off, and he's basically like, I'm just going to keep bullying you. I'm a dick. And she she looks really quick over. Teacher's not watching. And she turns around and just clocks him. <laughs> he flies across the room. <laughs> In, in dramatic fashion and crashes through some furniture. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great, and uh, I'm I'm at the point where Lloyd is like, you gotta you gotta apologize to him, and then she, then he goes it goes undercover as like a janitor and stuff, and keeps leaving her. Yeah, <laughs> like messages to apologize. Like her, her, she gets an omelet for lunch, and it's written in ketchup. S- apologize or sorry or something like that. Yeah, she and thinks like God's he, talking to her. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like manipulating some light so that it reflects a message. Apologize to him, <laughs> and she does apologize to him, and it's he says I'll never forgive you, but it's like very clear that's that he. Something else is going on. I get the feeling that he's getting a he's, he's like getting a little crushed, or he likes yeah. her. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 the undercurrent of their relationship is that she is utterly oblivious to that. But the the punch that have has the father shown up yet? Once is he a horrible asshole? He is completely like he is almost designed to be unreadable. Okay, he says a few words. That could be interpreted a variety of ways and makes a series of inhuman shark-like facial expressions. <laughs> and then he vanishes. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just trying to figure out, like, the end of this comic of Operation Strix, the, the get close to Damien's father. It can't just be Twilight pops a cap in him <laughs> well they've explicitly said that they they do explicitly say i don't know if they've said it in the manga yet but he talks about how if the mission was just to kill this guy they could have done that already the mission is to find out what he's doing and either talk him out of it or get ahead of it i guess i should have explained that diplomat that died that was a diplomat that was involved in like peace talks and so the worry is we're going towards a war we don't want a war there's something i wanted to point out though that was wrapped up in the damien punch and it's it's another bit of the comedy that i think actually comes through where anya gets caught for punching this kid and the teacher need, well, yeah, needs to she know made so much noise punching him through some furniture. well and he cries and he yells <laughs> <laughs> and he's totally emasculated <laughs> 
um, when the teacher comes up to her, he's like, why did you do it? And Anya knows she did it just because she had had enough of him and she punched him in the face because she was angry. And so she thinks back to like her training <laughs> and Yor tells her the only acceptable time to hit someone is when you're defending yourself or someone else. And so she very quickly comes up with, oh, well, I he stepped on uh, that girl's foot. <laughs> and and so yeah. I got mad on her behalf. And that girl like then is like, oh, my God, you did that for me. <laughs> and they they become best friends. That's that's Becky. She becomes a main character. I kind of read the situation as she was covering for Anya. Like, No, no. She genuinely thinks Anya did that for her. Oh, OK. I thought I read it as like. Oh, I'm going to bail my friend out because I already like you. There's probably a little but... bit of that. Like, she was trying to bail her out before that. But, because Becky also doesn't like Damien. She thinks he's an asshole. But. Yeah, he, he kind of is. Yeah, he he kind of is. I think they, they do a lot of cool Damian things. Damien Wayne, too. Well, Damien, they develop a lot. He He gets a story where he is not close to his father and he wants to be. Like, Damien lives in the dorms. Oh, I'm getting some Zuko vibes here. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But he's also not that bad. Like, I, is is Damien's older brother, like, the star child, and he always gets everything his way, and he's he's the heir apparent, and he's great, and Damien's garbage in his father's eye? There's not that much hostility towards him. The impression i get is that his dad does not have a lot of time for children the older brother oh my god what if he also has a family just for appearances (laughs) ben the older brother is a teenager (laughs) and he is coming up on the point where he's going to either go to university or start his career and so i think the dad's a lot more interested in the older son simply for that reason and not as interested in like an elementary schooler he doesn't care what you made out of macaroni in art class. He's he's dealing with global problems. Well, this is a global problem. <laughs> but what if what if we don't have enough macaroni because of your dumb war, Dad? <laughs> yes. Then I can't finish my art project. So, also, Damien's dad, like, even without you telling me about the weird shark impressions, uh. He looks fucking weird. He has two <laughs> expressions. He either has that wide-eyed, like, corpse his, stare. His, yeah, his eyes are wide open. Or they're incredibly narrowed as if he's about to kill you. Those are the I'm only two expressions right he ever now, gives. And his narrowed eyes are like, please stop. Go back to staring at me like you're you're hopped up on meth or something, <laughs> sir. Please. But the dad... It, 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 he... Like I said, I think he is intentionally unreadable. I think he's meant to be like the ultimate foil to Lloyd, who is like a master of human psychology. Oh, yeah. Lloyd is... His oh, God. cover is that he's a psychiatrist. <laughs> and he, he had a brand new technique called concussive therapy. It was really great. He had to get some priceless jewels and stuff back from some some people who were smuggling them through. And he had to lie to your to tell her why these people were after him and why he was kicking their ass. Concussive therapy. That's smart, Ben. Yeah, you messaged... That's some cutting-edge stuff. You messaged me to tell me that pretty soon with portable MRIs, we'll be able to target our concussive therapy at specific parts of the brain. Yeah. We'll hit you in exactly the right spot to concuss just the parts of the brain we want to concuss. We'll hit you at just the right spot to slap the crazy out of you. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, I, I can say that because I undergo mental health treatment. So, uh, yeah, that was good. I like Becky. Becky gets a whole story where she had trouble making friends. Damien gets a whole story where he wants affection from his father and he can't get it. And and Anya is completely unaware of Damien's crush on her. Damien doesn't want to have a crush on her. He doesn't want to have these feelings because Anya is... I don't want to say a loser like she's not a loser, but like Anya is strange. (laughs) She doesn't fit in. She is weird. She's very obsessed with like her spy cartoons and action and adventure and (laughs) 
and she's secretly about two years younger than yeah, everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> and and she she has a, a strange like smile that she uses to try and shrug off all the insults and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. She's weird. She was she was returned to the orphanage multiple times until Lloyd came along. Yep. And Becky is uh like a I guess they're supposed to be like six or six to eight years old. And Becky is trying to be more mature than her years. And so she has had a hard time making friends and not a lot of people have liked her in the past because she keeps criticizing them for being children, even though that's what they are. And that's what she is too. So. She arrives in a limo. Yeah. So she's super wealthy. She watches nothing but like soap operas and dramas. And she, she reads all yes, the teen girl magazines. Uh, the the pinnacle of maturity. Yeah, exactly. It, Soap operas. It's supposed to be cute because she's like she's a kid who's obsessed with romance without having the slightest idea what that even means. And she it means you like hold hands and stuff, man. She sees Anya spying on Damien all the time because Anya thinks Anya is a spy. And she thinks, obviously, Anya likes Damien. And so she keeps trying to hook him up. And so there's that angle, too, where you get obsessed in this little, like, playground romance <laughs> that can't possibly go anywhere because they're six years old. But uh, that's one angle. Yeah, don't, don't tell that to all the weird fan artists. Yeah, so that's where the anime community, of course, starts to ruin things, as they often do. Yes, they're 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 drawing them as older, and yeah, please go away. Uh, 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 that's you can't just have a really cool daughter. <laughs> you have to make him a weird teenager. Come on. I have always liked manga that has a higher degree of emotional intelligence. And part of the reason, like, it's part of the reason I even still read it because I do not fit in in that community at all. <laughs> I don't particularly like the anime community. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to say. I don't like the memes. I don't like the cosplay. I don't like any of it. I don't like conventions. I hate all of it. But, um, yeah. You know what? I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I've, I'm about I, I'm I'm at least two decades too old. <laughs> Here's the thing. I probably know more about it than many. <laughs> like I won't say most, but I've been around for a while. I've been reading this stuff for a while. I was there when I would say when it boomed. Do not cite the deep magic to me, witch. I was there when it was written. When it became, when it came over as a curiosity, and then when it boomed into mainstream popularity. And don't get me wrong, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad that it did. I'm not being a hipster about this. I'm, I'm glad that these things are popular. But yeah, I hesitate to recommend anime or manga ever, and it has to be something <laughs> really special. <laughs> It has to be an Uzumaki or a spy family for me to I don't recommend Uzumaki. I do recommend Uzumaki wrong with you. to horror fans. <laughs> I, there you I go. don't recommend it yeah. to general audiences. I'm with you on that. Yeah. No. But it's good horror. It, it's better than Lovecraft. If you want Lovecraftian horror, then I know. I, that's such a low bar. I know a wet grocery store it's, receipt is better than Lovecraft, but. <laughs> <laughs> but still i had a i had someone i don't know if i'd call him a friend an acquaintance who is not happy that i said lovecraft fucking sucked <laughs> well, he... he's like but he doesn't though and i'm like no he does he's an awful writer yeah i i still find value in lovecraft stories but it's similar I wouldn't recommend Lovecraft either. I'm glad that you laughed at this because I thought it was genuinely funny. It was it's it's funny and it it manages to be funny without uh insulting everyone and everything and doing a weird societal critique that contradicts itself. So that's a plus. It's 
very good. I can tell that it's only going to get quirkier and weirder, but not in like a totally bizarre disconnected way. Like, the fact that yours brother is dropping by, and he is a counterintelligence agent in this East German-esque world. Uh, this, this East German-esque country. Mm-hmm. And he's dropping by, and Twilight, obviously, Lloyd, he's a spy for the enemy. What, what kind of wackiness are they going to get into? Yeah. And he has to like suave his way out of it. Yeah, it's it's gonna be great. There's and obviously Yor is also going to have to explain to him why she got married <laughs> and didn't tell him. <laughs> There's. I assume that Yor's brother does not know she is a contract killer. <laughs> he does not know. <laughs> One thing I like about it is that it balances the wackiness. Because it would be very easy to go too wacky. A lot of anime do. Yeah. They balance it a little bit in a way that I think only Japanese stuff can because they, they're they they're allowed to get a little more explicit. Like when you say kill in a children's TV show or comic book in the US, that's, that's walking a fine line. They don't like to talk about that. Yeah, death. we still don't know if Jet died in avatar yeah. <laughs> the yeah. creators had to tell us <laughs> yeah that's a good comparison because like I, I think avatar would have been better if it had just a smidge more edge because it wanted to and it's there if you read between the lines but he got his his chest cavity caved in <laughs> well and then everybody's like he's our captain we'll take care of him just go <laughs> it's like yeah, he's dead yeah and then he never appears again but where I'm going with that is there's coming up, like I think around the time they get the dog, they have these students who are trying to bomb something and frame the West for it to kick off oh. the war. And that's something that Twilight has to stop. And of course, Anya gets all mixed up in it too. And she doesn't know what the hell she's doing. And you're afraid she's going to blow herself up <laughs> or get kidnapped by terrorists. But there's an interrogation scene in that where uh, Lloyd's boss, Handler, I I think that's the only name she's ever given. (laughs) Um, She interrogates one of the prisoners and she like, they're blindfolded. She kicks him against the wall, puts a gun to his head and asks him all these questions about war. Like, have you ever been so hungry you ate bark off a tree? Have you ever watched all these people die around you? Have you ever... Uh, woken up one day and nobody else who was who went to sleep with you woke up (laughs) like she she asks all these horrible questions about like the devastation of war and this kid you know he he's only been alive during the peace times he doesn't know anything about what the last war was like and she describes pretty vividly all the horrors of war and you know in the end she doesn't shoot him but she gets the information she needs and that's in this wacky comic about all this stuff and it runs the risk of being dissonant. But at the same time, I think the writer does a really good job of positioning it to being like, Hey, we're having fun here. And like, you may just want to rush to the part where, you know, Lloyd and Yor get married for real and they all become a family. But this is important. Like the, the mission is important. There is a reason for Lloyd to be so serious about keeping this professional and the balance is much more heavily in lighter comedy. It's supposed to be for kids. It's supposed to be for families. I haven't, I haven't experienced any dissonance yet. I haven't either. I think that's the closest it gets, but for me, it worked for me. It made me care more about Lloyd and what he was doing and made me respect him more. And then there's even a moment that comes out of this where Anya, the wackiness is like, she's trying to, she gets with the dog who can see the future, right? <laughs> and and the dog has visions of the future and Anya can read his mind. <laughs> so she gets the information and she sees the bomb go off and there's a clock tower in the background telling her exactly what time the bomb's going to go off. But she can't read a clock because <laughs> she never paid attention in school. <laughs> 
and and she wah, wah, wah. yeah and so she has to like walk up to a stranger and be like what time will it be when the big hand is there and the little hand is there and she does have a moment though where she's like you know if i paid more attention in school i would have been able to help more and it's great to learn because knowledge is power and it's it's a motivational thing for her where she has to get a little bit serious and it's good for them to not just be, they're not just wacky all the time. That sort of drives the wholesomeness of it. Yeah. He is trying to teach her. Lloyd's trying to teach Anya uh, about fractions and stuff. <laughs> and he's pushing her way too hard. And she runs crying to her bedroom. And Yorin and Lloyd have a talk about it. And... They're like trying to figure out better ways like, oh, we we need to like motivate her positively instead of like punitively. He actually, yeah, in a later chapter he he incorporates the spy stuff into her <laughs> mathematics lessons and finds out that she's asleep. She was trying to study herself. And it's cute. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, then then she she figures out fractions because the guy has two bullets left and an eight chambered gun, so that's two eighths. <laughs> now solve for the common denominator. I'm the common dominator. <laughs> <laughs> two eighths is one fourth. Do better on you, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I really like it. I have one question for you. Now, this is a genuine question for me to you. Are you going to continue reading it? Yeah, probably. I'm a pro- I went ahead and I read through to volume two. Yeah, you did only have to commit to one volume. Yeah, I did. And I already have Viz. I got that years ago, and it was so cheap. Yeah, this... So cheap, I, I kept with it. <laughs> so, everyone, just a, just a reminder, if you want access to all this manga, it's so cheap. And if you want access to Words About Books extra content, it's so cheap. Same price almost. You could just... You could just... You get both for under $5. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then it's so cheap, v- you'll just Viz, get with us cancel. on some kind of bundle deal. Yeah. It's obvious. You do books. We do books. Kind of. I know I said I hated the anime community, but, like, you're cool. Maybe. <laughs> Sometimes. <Yeah. laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. It is a rare manga I recommend to the general audience. I promise you, if you're looking for something fun to read. And heartwarming yeah. about a family. Like if you don't have a family and like you really want a family, this could be your second family. It, it's a good pick-me-up book. This is coming from, from me who is all about the horror and the misery, as Nate will tell you. Yeah. So this is what keeps me going between all that horror and misery. Nobody ever has to know you read a manga. I encourage you not to tell people you read a manga. You can tell me. You can email me. We can talk about it. I'll keep it on the DL. <laughs> you don't have to associate with the community. You don't have to look at their weird fan art or their, their wife You also pillows. don't have to tell people that you support words about books, but you can mm-hmm. do it without revealing that. But you should tell people you support words about books and to listen to it, because I don't have that fizz money, okay? I don't have Tatsuya yeah. Endo's fan base, all right? I need yeah. the promotion. We're working on it. <laughs> all right, that about wraps it up for this week. Follow us on Twitter for as long as that lasts at WABpod. Ben has taken over the Instagram at Words About Books podcast and is actually doing something with it, and people seem to like it, so that's cool. If you need additional show notes and content, and you do, because I'm starting to put stuff on there, so it's going to be relevant now, that is at blog.wordsaboutbooks.ninja. Also, of course, a special shout out to our Yacht Plan supporter patrons. In no particular order, we have. James from If You Want the Gravy Fame. Check out his blogs on movies and sodas and all sorts of other stuff at ifyouwantthegravy.wordpress.com. And we also thank Brad, who has a new website for us to plug, animepodcasterreincarnation.com. Ben also appears on that 
podcast. We appreciate Brad's support. And, uh, oh, that reminds me. Ben's got to make an appearance on that podcast. Which means I have to do what must be done. All right, well, I'm off to go reincarnate Ben. Join us next week for a guest appearance. And it's not Chad Dingleton. It's going to be a good one. Just need to quickly say that Damian Wayne fucking sucks. Like, that just... I need to throw that out there again. Not a Damian Wayne fan. No, he's garbage. Fuck that guy.